Okay, so a few weeks ago I was pretty sick. And you know when you're sick, you just want to stay home, watch TV, that kind of thing. So because I just didn't want to leave my apartment and wasn't feeling well, I ended up binge watching this entire show. Don't ask me how I found it or why I found it so late. It's a few years old, but it's this show called The Encore that I guess premiered during uh, the pandemic. And it's all these like ex-girl group members of R&B girl groups, particularly of like the 90s heyday. Uh, and they get together to create a super group. So yeah, very random, very esoteric reference. But anyway, the very first episode, there's one of these women who, if you're familiar with R&B girl groups, she was in the group Total in the 90s, um, which was one of the bad boy record label artists. Um, so they did a song with like Biggie and you know, like that whole, that whole era. And so her name is Pamela. And in the very first episode, Pamela has kind of this energy, not standoffish, but it's like, there's something to me, it was eerie, like a poker face, like you can't read her. And she seems like she doesn't want to connect too much with the other women. So I kind of logged it, right? But I was like, that was kind of weird. Like just an energy of just being a little bit, yeah, I'll say standoffish actually. I will use that word, like cold a little bit, right? But then the episodes progress and she actually ends up becoming like the more likable person in the house. Um, with all these ex-girl group members because she's the most like reasonable. She tries to get them to get along and she's like humble and, and, and mature and wise when they're all like bicker bickering about nonsense. So then one episode, another one of the women puts her hand on her leg, like not in a sexual way or suggestive way, very like sisterly, tenderly, like they're sitting around. I think they were listening to music. And this woman, Pamela, freaks out and she stands up and she's like, I'm not cool with that. Don't do that. And they're all kind of like, what? <laughs> and she clarifies that she's a born again Christian. She follows the Bible literally. And she doesn't want women feeling up on her and doing anything that's like lesbianic. <laughs> because she doesn't do that. She doesn't play that way. So again, all the girls are like, uh. And then she clarifies that she used to do that in the past. She used to dabble in the lady pond, but that is in her past. She does not do that. It is not of God, blah, 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 blah. And in that moment, it all made sense to me why that first episode, she came off kind of like cold and distant, aloof. That's a good word to describe my impression of her, aloof in how she interacted with the other women. Because when I think about it, I've met other gay people, gay men in particular, who have this like armor when they're around other people um, because it's like this big thing they're carrying, this big weight, their sexuality, that, that, that it's not the typical heterosexual um, identity, right? So in that moment, it was so obvious to me that she is a lesbian and it's not something in her past. And then when I really thought about it, her whole energy is actually very lesbianish. Like I had picked up on that energy before that episode, before she mentioned it, but it was just like, you know, like a subconscious thought of like, yeah, she really has kind of like this, she carries like a masculine kind of energy. But the thing is she's a New Yorker. In New York City, there's a lot of women who kind of have that like, Queens, you know, Brooklyn, Bronx, or like, you know, it's like a tougher sort of energy. They talk a certain way. Like it's not the most sophisticated thing. So it doesn't necessarily mean they're a lesbian, but in retrospect, like it's consistent with her. She is kind of butch. She is kind of butch. So I just found this fascinating that she freaked out. And you know, you, 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 your mind goes through a few different things. You're like, is it that she freaked out because it started feeling familiar and it, it kind of aroused her? Is it that she has this image of the born again Christian? So she doesn't want people to see the show and think that she's a lesbian because she has now internalized being a lesbian as part of her, her ungodly past. And 
That's also really interesting to me, how people who go through this, who struggle with their sexuality because they feel that it conflicts with their religious views, um, oftentimes, if they've gone through a really hard time with other stuff, and she mentions that, she says that she's now sober, she doesn't, she doesn't drink, and she, you know, she had a rough time with alcohol, blah, blah, blah. I think it's fascinating when people conflate that with their sexuality. Like, they kind of want to throw everything away that they connect to a time that was difficult for them. Whereas for me, and for I'm sure many of you watching, the gay thing is a part of you. Like, good, bad, whatever's happening in your life, it's always gonna be there. Just like, I'm always gonna have green eyes, and I'm always gonna have this facial hair. Like, that's identity. There's, there's choices, right? Choices would be drinking alcohol versus living a sober lifestyle. Uh, choices would be, I'm vegan today, tomorrow I'm, I'm back to being a carnivore, you know what I mean? Being gay is not on that list. Being gay is, it's, it's who you are, it's part of who you are. And I pitied her listening to this spiel from her, but I also found it honestly like almost comedic because I'm like, how do you lack that level of self-awareness that it's obvious to everybody around that you're probably a lesbian, and that you so don't want people to think that. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid that people are just as black and white in their thinking as you are? That, they, that they're that they going to think that if you're a lesbian, you can't possibly be a true woman of God? It's so interesting to me. And you know what this reminds me of? My dad tells this story. My, my dad was born in the 50s. My dad tells this story that when he was growing up, they forced him to be, he was left-handed. They forced him to be right-handed at school. Now, I don't know if that's because, you know, all the desks were made a certain way with a right-handed person's, uh, like, seating in mind. I don't know if it's just a psychological thing of they want everybody to be the same and to be taught the same way. But I'm sure most of you could agree that it's kind of ridiculous to force a left-handed person to be right-handed as a child. And here's the takeaway from that story. My father is now both left-handed and right-handed, meaning they forced him to be right-handed, so he knows how to use his right hand to write, but naturally he's still left-handed at the end of the day, right? So this story with Pamela from the show reminds me of that story with my dad. Sexuality, so many people try to like beat it out of themselves or other people try to beat it out of them, um, either literally or, or they go to therapy, you know, pray the gay way, all, all, all that stuff. And it's so nonsensical that it's almost comical to me as I'm sure it is for many of you because it just seems so absurd to really believe that you could remove a part of your of your of your essence of who you are of your energy it's just an energy thing too like some people just they see more masculine some people are more feminine and and it's part of who they are it's like that delivered uh viral youtube video if you know what i'm talking about same idea let's just pretend to pray the gay away and then you think who is this really for is this is this to, to please a community? Is it to, to feel like you conquered something? Like, who are you really doing it for? I think it's a really important question to ask these people who, who are kind of delusional about their sexuality. I have a close friend who has a cousin who is in a similar position where they all kind of like laugh behind his back apparently because he's flamboyantly gay. And this guy, because his immediate family is very religious, apparently he came out to them a long time ago and then they rejected him. So then he put on this whole other identity of like, I'm gonna go to the military, I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be saved by God and, and I'm gonna, you know, now I'm attracted to women. So I think now he's married to a woman and, and my friend is like, we just think he's delusional and that this is like a crazy thing that it's so, he's so obviously gay, but he's married to a woman and like, what does that dynamic look like? Again, on one hand, it's like kind of comical because it, it seems so ridiculous to those of us who maybe are more savvy to like, you're gay, bro, you're gay. But there's also a level of 
horror to this that people could delude themselves so much and and also like believe that they're conning other people that they're deluding other people when it's like no most people i think are smarter than that and i also have a theory that if you're inauthentic in in a major way in one aspect of your life you're typically inauthentic in other ways right like what's that saying like one lie leads to many other lies okay i don't know if that's a saying but it's like one you know no no, no that's not the saying the saying is when you have one lie, then you need to make up other lies to maintain that initial lie, right? And then it's like this domino effect of lies. And that's how I feel about this. And you see this, interestingly, as I get older, I see this specifically with like, I mean, now I'm going off on a tangent, but I've met girls in Miami who clearly have eating issues. Like, at worst, they definitely have an eating disorder, but like, they will lie about things like, Oh, I already ate. And then I realized that they say that every time we go out to dinner, it's like kind of weird, right? To go to dinner, but then you don't eat. Um, and I have noticed with those girls that then they'll lie about other things that are unrelated to food, how much alcohol they had, or they lie about like silly things that, that you don't need to lie about. Like, I remember this one girl, we went to a restaurant as a group and she was like, can you guys believe I've never been here? And then the server comes up and goes, oh, hey, it's nice to see you again to her. And I'm like, didn't you just say you've never been here? So that's where I'm going with, with this whole sexuality thing. It's like, if you're lying to yourself about your sexuality and to other people, then you're probably lying about other things. Meaning when you're in a relationship, in a heterosexual relationship, a pretty good portion of that must be pretend, right? Uh, if you have kids, then there's certain lies that are going to end up going down to those kids. Which is why, by the way, the older I get, the more disturbed I become by guys who will outright be like, oh yeah, I'm partnered with, I have a girlfriend, or like, I'm married to a woman, you know, like, don't you want me? Every once in a while that will happen on an app or somehow so some guy will find me or try to get my attention who's partnered to a woman and they use it almost as like a sales pitch. And I'm like, why would I be into that? Because inherently you're asking me to be attracted to deception. That might work for some people. So maybe some people are, are attracted to deception. I am not, I am not attracted to deception. Anyway, I'm sounding off curious what you guys think. Oh, by the way, do you like my, my lovely new paintings <laughs> that I, that I concocted myself? in my lab, in my artist studio. I know it's nothing complicated, but I kind of love it. Look, it's a whole set. It's all about the color motif. You see that? Pink and purple. See you guys next time.